Hello and welcome to the newest episode of the Social Speak Network podcast. I'm Caitlin McDonald and I'm so excited to have Rod Thomas on our show today. Rod Thomas is a director of regional sales for Scorpion Healthcare, an award-winning digital marketing partner that has helped more than 250 hospitals and healthcare providers improve their digital presence and achieve their business goals. Rod has consulted on digital strategy for healthcare organizations of varying size and services, including individual provider practices, private orthopedic groups, addiction treatment centers, small rural hospitals, and major health systems. Rod is a graduate of Northwestern University and lives in the Chicago area with his wife and two amazing children. So I'm so excited to have Rod on the show today. Let's give him a warm welcome. All right, welcome Rod. Thank you so much for being on the show today. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking me. Great. So to kick things off, tell us a little bit about your background in digital marketing. Well, uh, I've been at Scorpion uh, for over two years now, and that's really where I got my start in, in digital marketing. I've been solely focused on healthcare in those two years. Um, so I've, I've entered into this realm uh, as a corporate employee and kind of been brought up through their training program. And I've worked, over that time, I've worked with a lot of different organizations. I've worked with rural hospitals, so critical access hospitals, and they have a unique set of circumstances, unique challenges, all the way up to large multi-hospital systems, which is another, uh, another whole uh, game. I worked with addiction treatment centers and, and individual uh, doctor practices or, or larger physician groups. So it's, um, it's within healthcare, but even within, you know, you think healthcare has a lot in, you know, it seems like a very specific vertical, but even within healthcare, there are a lot of different uh, groups and business goals and challenges that, that each, each group uh, faces on a regular basis. So I've, I've, I've enjoyed learning about all of those different aspects of those groups and helping them figure out what you can do online to make connections with your community, because it, it's all very different. Yeah, and uh, you know some of the the messaging that you really have with all of these different types of practices has to be very different. Someone dealing with addiction is going to be very different than you know it, the the customer lifetime journey of somebody who needs a knee replacement. So it's really you know how do you speak to to both of those? Even even within hospitals, I mean, even yes. you take a critical access hospital, and and their primary one well not a, a very a, a primary objective of theirs is just to keep their market from feeling like they have to go to a big city to get a, high, a higher level of care. And they're often, you know, they often have fewer resources than, than other hospitals. So than than urban hospitals, mm -hmm. but that's their focus. But if you turn and look at urban hospitals, they have competitors down the street. And so they're competing against just the other organizations that serve that market. So even those two comparisons of rural hospital trying to just maintain its market versus a, a larger hospital in a, in a city that's trying to you know, elbow its way up with, uh, with the competitors that it has down the street. Absolutely, yeah, 100%. Um, so Rod, your business is really a one-stop solution for technology and marketing. How does this differ from a typical approach to digital marketing? Well, I, I don't know that there is a typical approach to <laughs> digital marketing. I mean, I, I was trying to, uh, trying to think like, what would be typical? I, I don't yeah. really... <laughs> I don't really know. So, I mean, you have, you have, um, there's, there are so many companies out there that, that do quote unquote digital marketing. Mm -hmm. There are not a lot of barriers to entry into the, into the place, into the space. I mean, you can build a website and basically say, you know, I've got experience managing Google AdWords and Facebook, uh, and Facebook campaigns and you're off to the races. So, mm -hmm. um, there are, there's a, there's a lot of competition out there. I think you've got people who build websites, uh, on you know certain platforms or in you know whether it's an open source or proprietary platform you've got other people that, that the other or agencies that do you know uh, we do digital marketing you've also got agencies that are more broad based agencies that are you know we do everything we do print tv film you know print tv branding you know all of all of your your entire marketing uh service line you know all those channels so i say what sets us apart is our specialization in digital. And uh, so combined with our history and the technology platform that we've built, we've been in the business for 18 years, which is like 
grandfather, you know, that's, that's a, that's a, a pretty substantial history. And we've, we've yeah. invested in over that time in our platform and our systems so that we are really pushing the boundaries of what's possible and, and being able to drive efficiencies with that system. So having a platform where you have the website, you have your landing pages, you're able to track and have transparency on all of those entry points into the, the system, so to speak, so that if, not to get too into the weeds here, but if somebody clicks on an ad and mm -hmm. they look at the landing page, but they don't convert, they don't, in other words, they're not making a phone call or filling out a form, but later they come back to your website, if it's on our system, we actually can see, all right, we've, we've, we've noted them when they clicked on the, the, the ad, we realize when they come back, they're not necessarily an organic lead. This is somebody who actually saw an ad, they just didn't convert until later. Um, but yeah. that platform with, has a lot, of, a lot of intricacy built into it that, that gives us a, a big advantage in, in the space. Awesome. And I'm assuming you're going to come back to talk about that a little bit more when yeah. we talk about Scorpion. Um, but let's keep going with these digital marketing questions. So what sure. current trends are you seeing for health centers with digital marketing in 2019? Oh, well, I mean, healthcare continues to be slow to adapt. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give, how many, I'm going to say two things here. I, I'm going to give them a bit of a pass on one end because Healthcare is just different. It's not the same as shopping at Amazon or Target or or Best Buy online. I mean, you, you're dealing with HIPAA issues. You're dealing with your personal, your private personal health information. Um, so there are some, there are different obstacles in healthcare to do this responsibly. But that being said, healthcare is a is is just not been as uh, advanced in terms of addressing the opportunity to connect with their community online. Mm. Um, and when they do make an aggressive move, they, they often just get it wrong. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's a trend. That's one trend. And the other trend I would say just in terms of like digital marketing general is video. I mean, video, video, video is, is going to, is king. I mean, that, that type of content is really, um, people respond very differently and, and kind of have a, a closer connection with video. And we're just seeing a lot of that's, that's, paying dividends down the road if you're investing in that video and having that opportunity, which is, that's a trend, a big trend, I would say. Huge trend, huge trend, yeah. And are there any tactics that were expected to perform well or had a lot of hype but failed to take hold or deliver the results that they wanted to in 2018? Um, I don't know that there are tactics. I, mm -hmm. I think we often are, we're often monitoring the platforms that are kind of popping up online like Snapchat, for example, yes. or, or Oath, uh, which maybe not too many people know about, but uh, those types of platforms that are kind of all of a sudden held up as the next opportunity to connect and they don't really take shape. Mm -hmm. they, don't make, they don't take hold the way that you, you anticipate. Um, and that's, I think that comes back to a very key component, which is understanding that we can't control consumer behavior. Yes. Um, that's key. I mean, we can't force people to interact on Snapchat in a way that they're, that they're, that they're not doing naturally. Uh, and Twitter is the same, you know, you can't force Twitter to be a platform that it's not. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to learn to do is just be respond to what consumers, the, to the consumer behavior that we're tracking online and, and getting a message that's going to resonate with the right person at the right time on the right platform. I think that that's a really interesting point. You know, it, you always want to pay attention to what the data says, but you also need to pay attention to the messaging that you're actually putting out there. And if it aligns with the actions that people are used to taking on that specific social media network. Um, exactly or, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it, you know, you can't just throw it out saying, no, this is never going to work. Find a way, if you really want to make it work, find a way to make that messaging really stick with the people who are on that network. Right. And find a way that's going to, that you're going to, that you can connect with them. Yes. If, if, if you, you know, the message may be on point, but it just may be the delivery system that's wrong. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, so what are the top three things that a healthcare center should be doing online to see a return from their digital marketing efforts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, get your, first of all, you have to get your economics right. You have to tie what you're doing to your business goals. Um, and we tend to get squirrely on this. I mean, we, it, this, these are business, uh, these are business issues. 
Um, and so we're going to talk, you have to consider what the lifetime value of a patient is. What does that revenue look like that you're going to generate from a patient? And what is the cost of acquiring a patient? Mm -hmm. um, and those, we think of healthcare, there is a mission to healthcare, and we hate kind of talking about the economics of it. But if you're not taking care of the economics of it, you're going to be out of business. You right. can't sustain. If you're, if you're spending more than you're taking in, you're not going to be able to, to serve that, that mission. Mm -hmm. And so I often, we, I often you know, kind of frame this in terms of, look, you, if you take care of these business issues, you're going to improve your business but you're also going to improve the health outcomes of the people in your community because you're going to be connecting with the people who need your service quicker, getting them help earlier, hopefully, and getting them back to their life healthier and with, uh, with better health outcomes. And so yeah. that's the, the top thing I would say, and I kind of went off a tangent here, but like get your economics right. Yeah. Um, the second thing I would say is develop a strategy and stick with it. Uh, people often are saying, well, I tried it for a while. I tried it for a month and nothing, didn't see anything. Well, that's, not, mm -hmm. that's not adequate. Um, if you're trying to dip your toes in and out and, and trying to really make a lot of adjustments and, and try this and then try that and trying to just pull levers to see which one's going to uh, work, you're not going to see the return. So be thoughtful about developing a strategy and then put it on the field, so to speak, mm -hmm. and then watch it. Um, you're not going to get it right right away so you're going to it's going to require some adjustments so don't don't give up on that and then the third thing i would say is you have to track everything it's a unique this is not like putting an ad in a newspaper in the old days or even putting a billboard up you can track you can tie consumer behavior to your campaign yes. and so you need to be able to track okay how many leads are we generating how many patients are we getting in the door off of this off of this marketing campaign. So you know what's working. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and it, and this goes beyond like the number of impressions or just the cost per click. Just the, knowing the cost per click, if you're, if you're monitoring your results based on the cost per click, you're monitoring the wrong thing because that's not tied to revenue. You could, you could waste tons of money just trying to get to the lowest cost per click because it's just somebody clicking your ad, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the right person. Yeah. So really making sure you're tracking the back end to say, okay, how many, how are we doing in terms of generating patients and revenue with this investment? And I like how Scorpion, um, you know, with your own system, you have a way to track, you know, it, not only if somebody became a patient or a lead that first time that they clicked the ad, but also if they came back, you know, it, it, a week later, a month later, after they've already seen the ad and they come back to your website um, to then book an appointment. I think that that's so powerful because it, provides even more information about, you know, that cost to acquire. It will bring that down and really, you know, show you the long-term effects of the strategy that you have in place. Yeah, it's that data is important. And even, yeah. even with that system, it's difficult. I mean, some, it's, it's not perfect, but you've got to start somewhere. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Look, there are a lot of different data points. It's not just somebody's clicking on an ad and make it, it I shouldn't say, it's not always that somebody's just clicking on an ad, calling you, and that that's a, a, that's a conversion. This ad may be a point that they, they, they've talked to their friends, they've, they've looked at reviews. There are a lot of different points, online and offline, that go into establishing trust, and that's really what it is, connection and trust with a potential patient. Um, so, but the data is, is important, even though it's not perfect, it's important to make sure that you, you know what's, what's happening with, if you're investing that money. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the top strategy that should be followed, but often marketing teams get wrong? The top strategy, as opposed to the tactic, and I want to try and make a difference here. Um, yeah, and you can answer the top tactic as well. Um, I think both are very, very important. Um, yeah, no, I think yeah. strategy is good because they're, the tactics change. I mean, the tactics, as we discussed, even within different, even with like an orthopedic group, the tactics are going to be different. If you're trying to connect with a, a dad or a guy who's out um, playing softball on the weekends uh, in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a league and he wrecks his knee, that's a different, there's going to be a different tactic to connect with him versus connecting with, uh, say, like somebody like my father who's in his 70s and golfs and, and probably needs a knee replacement, but he's not looking for it. Like those are different. So you're going to have different tactics depending yes. on 
which person you're speaking to. The marketing strategy, the top strategy that should be followed but often gets wrong is um, empathy. Is really empathy. Focusing on the patient. Um, we think that technology is like that just launching a pay-per-click campaign into these tech tools are gonna get the job done. It, but it is important to realize that it is a tool. It's not, um, it's, it's, it's an avenue, it's a, it's a way to connect with someone. It is not the connection. Um, Google, Facebook, YouTube, these are delivery systems. And so effective marketing is not about how much you're doing, it's about connecting with the patient, putting yourself in their shoes, understanding their fears in the moment, the, the need that they have at that moment in time, and then treating them with empathy. It's, it's the first chance you have to serve them as a patient. And if you can serve them as a patient before they've even picked up the phone or set up an appointment, you're going a long way to winning them as a, as a, as a patient in your office. Yes, that is so important. I mean, really, it's important in any industry. You have to really know your your story and those pain points of your um, consumers or patients. So I love that answer. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll say one other thing on it. And something that I hear a lot when I get on a call with someone is like, we need to be doing social media. We just, we, we're not doing it. We need to do it. Mm -hmm. and it's almost like, we have to check, it, it, found, it sounds like we have to check that box. Yes. And it's like, well, I, first of all, yes, I, there's a great opportunity on social media to connect, but not just to do it to do it. I mean, if you're just gonna do it and say, hey, happy 4th of July from you know, the, the <laughs> Thomas Doctor Group or happy Memorial, that's not, I mean, mm -hmm. that's checking the box. Yes. But it's not really, thinking in terms of where you can connect and how you can connect with someone. So that's, that's the difference. I would kind of specifically differentiate the two. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So your business is Scorpion. It's a top ranked uh, agency for healthcare practices. Can you tell us a little bit more about your company and the services? Sure. Um, well, we've been in business for, as I said, 18 years. We actually got our start in the legal industry. Uh, back in the day, so that's the the Scorpion started as a marketing you know uh, marketing agency to help law firms develop their websites, get found uh, online through SEO and through then ads uh, to help lawyers connect with potential clients and help them you know build their client base. Mm -hmm. We branched out since then. We do like home services, and we also have done healthcare for over ten years. Um, our our chief revenue officer, and I'm going to paraphrase what he says here. He says we're in the quote unquote oh no verticals. <laughs> in other words, um, everything was fine yesterday. Something happened today. And all of a sudden, oh, no, I need a lawyer or oh, no, I need a plumber or oh, no, I need a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so those oh, no moments are people are reaching for their phones now. It's like, oh, no, I've got a, I got a need and I, I, I pull up my phone. So that's that's where the connection point is. Um, so over that time, we've developed uh, you know, our own system. And I've talked about you know, the it's a platform that's, you know, is a CMS that holds the website. And from the very beginning, when we start to develop, we're, we're developing with an eye on SEO. We're doing SEO services. We're doing uh, paid ads where the, on any channel that's online, any, you know, any different connecting points. So primarily we talk about Google or Facebook, but that includes, you know, ways and, and programmatic or native advertising and retargeting and, ge you know, geotargeting, all of those different tactics. We're, we're doing listings management, we're helping with reputation monitoring, we're doing content marketing. So as, as much as we can provide in terms of one partner to, for our clients that, that will solve as many issues of their digital footprint, their online presence as possible. Great. Um, so that they're not trying to juggle multiple vendors and, and trying to get everybody to, to, work, <laughs> to work nice together. Yes. Um, so that's 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 really is what we stick to really being very specific in terms of like delivering um, our technology and our marketing expertise. Mm -hmm. um, that's our, our our team that knows you know can talk and understand what the business goals of a, a particular company are, and then develop strategies based on those goals, and then help them monitor it and optimize it over time. 
Um, and that's, a, that's an important aspect of, of what we do is, is regularly checking in, following what's happening and making adjustments as we go, whether it's whether the business objectives are changed or whether the, the market has changed. If there are market conditions that require a change, you have mm -hmm. to make sure that you're, you're just not assuming that everything is working now the way it worked even you know, two, two months ago. Yeah, and I mean, really, a lot of digital marketing and sponsored advertising is at the whim of, you know, whoever you're doing the advertising through. Um, we recently saw a change with how, um, you know, uh, lead optimization campaigns were working on Facebook and are testing, you know, almost exclusively now using the lead form directly on Facebook rather than sending someone to a landing page. And how does that conversion rate differ? And that's something, you know, if, if the platforms never change, then it would make marketing a little bit easier. But consumers change, the, the platforms change and everything. So you have to really stay on top of that. Right. The rules change. I mean, yeah. yes, absolutely. It, it, and Google's always making changes. Facebook's, I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're trying to optimize and, and make sure, you know, so when they make a change, you've got to, <laughs> you're not going to know exactly, you may not know exactly what the implications are right exactly. away. Exactly. So, Yeah. So lastly, um, are there any digital marketing strategies that your team is currently testing that you don't think many other agencies are implementing for their clients? Um, I would say we're, this, this platform that we're developing on uh, mm -hmm. is really unique. And so um, it's the, the, the advances we're making in terms of machine learning, and it's, it's, it's a form of AI mm -hmm. where where the, the platform itself is tracking conversions across multiple variables and adjusting based on those variables. So in other words, you have industry standards, right? There's, there's certain uh, benchmarks in the industry and, and I'll throw out, you know, I've heard, you know, typically m mobile devices convert at a 20%, right, a rate 20% greater than desktop. So that's, let's just say that's, you know, that may or that, about average right mm -hmm. and so our system would would then is going to track that but it's also going to not assume that 20 percent is the is the standard it's going to investigate it's going to take a look at the specific campaign the specific industry the specific market and it may be in a particular market that that's actually higher it may actually this, these campaigns may may convert it at, at like 30 percent mm. on, on mobile or less it could be less and our system is what we're developing is a system that's going to adjust the spend and adjust the budget based on those variables as they, uh, that are unique to the specific campaign, unique to the specific client. So it's adjusting geographical targets, it's adjusting time of day, adjusting mm -hmm. device, it could be keywords, it could even be uh, content, you know, uh, ad co content tone. We may have, you know, constantly, we're constantly doing A to B testing and a lot of people do A to B tests, but mm -hmm. to have a system that is doing it automatically as opposed to a person coming in and taking a look and having to do that comparison. Um, I think that is, I know that that is going to change the game yes. uh, for our clients when, when this system is, and we've, we've tested it in a lot of different verticals and it's, it's, it's really effective when you see a, a machine just kind of making those adjustments and, and shifting tactics and shifting budgets on the fly based on the actual data that, it, that it's seeing. And that's, that's a very powerful tool that um, comes from 18 years. It's not something that someone can put together right, right away. And being able to bring that to someone like a sole practitioner, like, a, a, you know, a small orthopedics group mm -hmm. or, you know, our other verticals, you know, a, you know, a couple of guys who are a couple of lawyers or even a, a plumbing company, uh, being able to bring that type of power uh, to their campaigns, I think is going is, is gonna to change the game for them. So powerful. So powerful. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. And I'm excited about our team that is very good at this. I mean, we get to, we, we, I often, you know, we have uh, meetings where we're talking about it, learning more about it. And, and it is exciting to see what they're doing and, and how this could, could really help, help mm -hmm. potential clients. Definitely. So Rod, is there anything I should have asked, but I didn't? I mean, you could have asked about my golf game, but that would have been a very <laughs> <fun question>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in yeah. Chicago coming out of the winter and the, the golf game is terrible. <laughs> that's, that's not a good question. No, I don't, I don't think so. I, uh, uh, no, this has been great. And I, I don't know that there is, uh, 
there's a, there's a lot of things you could have asked, but I, I but it's been it's been a pleasure talking to you. I I, I really um, I get a kick out of figuring these things out with with clients, and and so it's um it, it's 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 always a puzzle, right? Because each each office is different, and each each market is different. So it's it's um it's something that's my day is never the same. It's it's always taking somebody where they are, whether they are just starting out or whether they're already farther down the road and they're trying to get better. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to um, to be on our show and to answer these questions for, for the interview. I know that you spent some time thinking about what your answers were going to be, so I really appreciate that. Um, and it was very insightful hearing, hearing all of the insights. I can <laughs> come up with a better word, that would be great. But um, it was wonderful having you on the show. Thank you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you for asking. Great. So thank you again to Rod for being on our show and talking more about the insights he has with Scorpion. Um, now, one of the biggest takeaways I have from today's podcast is the role that empathy has in your digital marketing. It is so important to be empathetic in everything that you do online. You need to connect with a customer, with a client, with a patient who is going through a difficult health choice. Now, maybe the health choice seems simple for you. Uh, potentially, you're a dentist and somebody needs to come in for a routine cleaning. This could be somebody who is absolutely terrified and has had negative experiences with every dentist that they've worked with up until stepping in your door and sitting down in your seat. So you need to understand, as we've talked about in multiple episodes, that customer journey. What is their patient journey as they're going from recognizing that they might have a, a problem to finding a solution to actually calling up and scheduling appointment? And how can you be empathetic to them and their situation every step of the way? Yes, the main goal of digital marketing and online marketing is to increase your bottom line revenue. But in order to do that, you need to make sure that your story and your marketing and messaging is empathetic to the customers who are out there. So again, my name's Caitlin McDonald. You've been listening to the Social Speak podcast. Please be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Podbean, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.